डॉक्टर जॉय टॉकिंग अबाउट पीपल विथ कोमोबिट कंडीशन लाइक डायबिटीज और हाई ब्लड प्रेशर इफ समन इज टेकिंग इंसुलिन और समन इज ऑन ओरल मेडिकेशन फॉर डायबिटीज और इफ समी इज टेकिंग मेडिकेशन फॉर हाई ब्लड प्रेशर वॉट इज इट लाइक फॉर दीज पीपल इफ दे वॉन्ट टू डोनेट ब्लड ओके सो दिनरल प्रिंसिपल इज वी वॉन्ट टू टेक ब्लड फ्रॉम अ हेल्थी डोनर that's the baseline principle we want to we do not want to be in a situation where you finish donating blood and then we will have to wheel you off to casualty for some particular reason it's not a good thing for us it's not good for the donors and then for the reputation of the blood center as well so our donor questionnaire is designed to make sure that a person who donates blood does it when there is no harm or minimum risk to themselves and then on the other side the recipient also should benefit from that unit of blood and so therefore there are things that are designed into the checklist that uh, somebody's infection is not transmitted to somebody else to the other person although they might be a, look like a healthy carrier so that is the underlying principle reduction of risk and taking a normal healthy human being to donate blood so the question of whether we should allow uh people who have some kind of morbid comorbidities to donate is always a challenge within our own fraternity there are papers which are going back and forth and discussions which are always constantly active about it. now in reality we are always challenged to find this normal population and encourage them to come and donate and be regular donors so when we push the limits we allow certain uh, uh borders to be crossed so for example with the situation of diabetes now the general principle in diabetes is that people who have diabetes uh, it's not only about the blood sugar level it is also about comorbidities that they may have uh, we all know that there is some immunomodulation in these people uh, sometimes they are more prone to infections they can be bacteremias which are not detected which means that they can be afebrile but they might be in a state where they have bacteria floating around in their blood which they might not be aware of uh, they are more prone to things like urinary tract infections and others if the diabetes is not well controlled the second part is that unless again the diabetes is not well controlled uh, they can be people who have damage to end organs so we know that blood vessels get damaged in diabetes nerves around blood vessels get damaged in diabetes and so they can have uh, renal problems they can have problems in the eyes they can have nerve problems and peripheral neuropathies there are uh, many complex complications which result from these kind of diseases so the general rule now uh, over this after this last uh, amendment of the act is that we can take from people who are mild diabetics who are on oral drugs and who have not had any evidence of end organ damage and we add this caveat of saying that if your drugs were not modified within the last 30 days so if your drugs are being modified obviously there is a issue with the blood sugar levels you need to stabilize before you can come in and donate blood so the underlying philosophy is be as healthy as possible take low risk donors take care of the people but if you have to take somebody with diabetes we need to make sure that they are on constant medication only oral medication nothing has changed no insulin person who's taking insulin should be donating blood the challenge in our population that we see is often that sometimes people take medicines and they do not know specifically what medicines they are taking sometimes they do not know whether it's for blood pressure or for diabetes somebody might have told them one way or the other so clarity about knowing what is the medications that they are taking their last blood sugar levels how regular people are to check their blood sugars and to know that they are in control and the fact of Uh, how many of our patients can respond to the question that do you have end organ damage do you have no end organ damage and how is the blood center doctor who screening so many people in that limited time going to look at the funders to see whether you have a retinopathy or examine for peripheral neuropathy or check kidney health so there is a little more leeway given so that people can come in and donate because also uh, newly diagnosed diabetics who have earlier donated feel very upset when they are not allowed to donate we have been extra cautious in our in our blood center but there are changes which are coming in so people are allowed to donate if they have mild disease no complications and uh, have well controlled diabetes and what about hypertension sir for example if the morning blood pressure came to 150 90 yeah uh, can they still come and donate yeah so uh, that kind of uh, situation also the same rules apply 
um, well-controlled diabetes, um, well-controlled hypertension, no change in drugs recently, and no endogen damage. These are the basic criteria that we'll apply for hypertension also. But we should also remember that there is this uh, phenomenon called white coat hypertension. Um, when people come in to donate blood, uh, two groups, one is the replacement donor, the other is the wanted donor. Maybe the wanted donor is all happy to come in and donate, but the moment they see the whole scenario around what's happening in the blood center, the white coat, the stet, and perhaps a little sight of blood inside that might raise some people's blood pressure. So what we advise is when we detect a higher blood pressure, which is over 90 diastolic, then we ask the person, have you had that? hypertension before. If they have no history of hypertension, we'll ask them to sit down calmly in a corner of the room quietly and then recheck them after 20 to 30 minutes so that it's if the anxiety is there and that factor has been addressed. Sometimes we call them back after a day or two also if there are people who are willing to come back and donate uh, to avoid that white coat hypertension phenomenon. Uh, but if there's a persistent BP which is more than 100 diastolic, then we really do not want to take them. And the issue is that suddenly when we take 450 ml, if there is a catastrophic drop of diastolic and then there is a perfusion problem. That's why we do not want to take from hypertensives for any reason. So you're suddenly depleting them of uh, the pressure that their blood system is, the vascular system is used. So, so, these people, so should they take their morning medications and come when they're coming to donate or should yeah. they sleep with that day? Yeah, no, no. If they are on regular antihypertensives, they should take the regular antihypertensives and be able to tell the doctor, this is the medicines oh. that I'm taking. I only have mild hypertension and I'm usually otherwise stable. Right? Because we want to be able to detect the normal controlled BP. Earlier, we used to allow only some few drugs, uh, thyroxine and a uh, few things which make people normal is the only drugs that we used to allow at a certain point in time. Now with the new rules, we are allowed to take people with uh, mild illnesses, so long as the individual knows what the illness is and whether the illness is in control. So there's an onus on both sides for this. Uh, 